Hi, you're listening to The Advantage Podcast with me, John Camworthy. Hey there, uh, I'm Dr. John Kenworthy and welcome to this week's podcast for simple brain hacks to overcome performance anxiety. And thank you for listening to my podcast. I do trust that you're enjoying them and please kindly do me a favour and spread the word to your friends and colleagues. This week I am sharing with you four simple brain hacks and I really do mean simple ways to overcome performance anxiety. I've been prompted in part because of the responses I've been receiving to about a little video I made just over a year ago about your brain on stress and anxiety. And it's garnered just over shy over a a hundred thousand views on YouTube alone, which is very humbling but also disturbing and concerning for me. And if you read some of the publicly visible comments, you'll get an idea of the type of questions and and comments I've been getting privately and through email from people who really are suffering some very major problems with stress and anxiety. But there are four ways that anybody can deal with the immediate effects and reduce their performance anxiety. But a quick caveat, if I may, I am not a medical doctor. And if you are suffering from any long-term stress or anxiety, please do seek professional help. The four simple ways that I'm going to share with you today will help anyone with any degree of stress and anxiety. But I'm focused far more on business people or people at work who are suffering stress and anxiety because they are about to perform in front of others. That performance might be an interview, a monthly report, a weekly meeting, or a major presentation that you've been preparing. And if you've yet to watch my little video, you'll find some link at the bottom of the email if you receive this on email, and also on the show notes. You should do so now or later. And whilst you're over on YouTube, do subscribe to my channel. But before I begin on the four simple brain hacks to overcome performance anxiety, I think it's important that we understand just what is happening when we do get anxious. I was just seven or eight years old when I first experienced acute stage fright. I was due on stage to sing in my beautiful soprano voice in the finals of an interchurch national competition. But the room was just so huge. There were more than a thousand people there, parents and other contestants, and this was the finals. Something I'd been preparing and practicing for pretty well all year. But this song was difficult and required that I really hit those high notes perfectly. I just froze at the side of the stage. It was as if my shoes were covered in glue and glued me to the floor. My thin nylon shirt was soaking with sweat at the armpits and I began to shake. My singing coach, otherwise known as the choir master, came over to me and urged me to go on stage, shoving me out there. So I did get out into the middle of the stage and I stood there like a rabbit caught in the headlights. So I kept my head down. I made myself as small as I could so they couldn't see me. But then the pianist started the piece and repeated the first few bars again and again and again as I desperately tried to start singing. But not a chance. I just turned and ran from the stage in floods of tears. It's just a stage fright, the choir master said loudly to anyone who came near. He'll be fine in a moment. Hmm. Well, 46 years later, and I still get a little jittery when I'm about to perform. Not the singing. I gave that up a few years after that seven-year-old soprano was left crying by the side of the stage. So why do I get jittery? After all, I do this for a living. Well, it's probably for the same basic reasons that anyone does. I am about to perform in front of other people who will, in some way... Be judging my performance. See, whatever your performance may be, a presentation to thousands or your annual performance review, an interview for a cool job 
or a monthly meeting in the office, maybe a sales pitch to a client, or one of those difficult conversations that you need to have with a reluctant team member. So how do you know that anxiety has crept up on you? Well, you need to be aware of your body, your thinking and your feelings. Anxiety reveals itself to us through shallower and shorter breaths. Through perspiration, you may notice your ever so slightly clammy palms as you shake hands with your potential client. You might notice yourself changing your body language and unconsciously you just dropped your head. or turned your feet towards the door, or perhaps became tense in your arms and fists started to form. These are the classic signs that adrenaline is coursing through your veins, preparing you to freeze, to fly or to fight. The feelings we have of anxiety are our physical response to the neurochemicals coursing through our body, principally the stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline. And it's important to realise that by the time you feel anxious, the chemicals that are creating those feelings have already been produced. And that's caused by your thinking. Consciously or unconsciously, you have been thinking thoughts that cause your brain to initiate a stress response, which in turn makes you feel stress and anxiety. What you need to do is stop thinking those thoughts. But herein lies the problem. You can't not think something. To think something, you have to think it. But to not think it, you have to think it to not think it. Remember my seven-year-old self back on the stage in tears? My dad, bless him, came over and told me, just pull yourself together, lad. Tell me, Stop worrying and just get out there. My choir master didn't have much better advice. He told me to stop thinking about the audience and the judges. But at least he kindly reminded me that I was actually quite good at this singing thing and really did know the piece well, and that I could hit those notes. So how do you not worry? Well, you can't. What you can do is four very simple, very easy things and stomp out that anxiety. So number one, how can you stomp on your performance anxiety with a simple brain hack? Well, it's one thing that works for everyone, and it's breathing. Yep, I know you've been doing this since day one of your life, and brilliantly too, I might add, and you're doing it very nicely right now. But just how well do you breathe? In all likelihood, you don't even know the answer. But you do know that when you get anxious, you get a little shorter of breath. Your breathing becomes shallow and just using the top of your lungs and your voice will lift as a result. So breathe deep into your belly, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Do that right now and you will soon feel relaxed as your body benefits from more oxygen and a calming thought life. So, number two, would you like to feel good about life and whatever it is you're about to do, whatever you're about to perform? Sure you do. So have a laugh. No, I'm not going to tell you a joke. Just laugh and laugh out loud. Doesn't matter what it sounds like, just laugh. (laughs) Okay, not if you're at a funeral. See, if anyone looked at you as if you're completely mad, well, maybe you are just a little bit mad. But do you feel better? Yes, you do. So you can breathe and you can laugh. Number three, would you like to feel pumped with life and energy? And who doesn't? Just raise your arms above your head in a victory pose. Stretch the sky and punch it. Powerful, huh? You feel more confident, you feel larger, and you feel as if you're in charge. Now become aware of your breathing again, breathing deep into the belly. Feel how your body feels now. 
Hmm, feeling better. What about some more life and energy? Well, if you if it's appropriate now, find some space and pace, pumping your arms, punching the air as if you're in the boxing ring, facing Muhammad Ali, chasing him around. And if you don't believe me, one of the best known and most successful presenters in the world, Tony Robbins, does this. He jumps up and down, spins around, pumps his fist in the air and stretches his arms out wide for five minutes before going on stage. Now, it's important that you get to huff and puff a bit, that you're actually getting just slightly out of breath, because that will help you get the endocannabinoids, yep, the same stuff that's in marijuana, and some endorphins going, which makes you feel really good and relaxed. It also helps you feel powerful by using this technique. Fourthly, we're going to look at how we can reduce the amount of performance anxiety you have to deal with, how much cortisol and adrenaline is going to go into your body. And what we do here is we deliberately think of something else and we visualise the positive. And when I say visualise, I mean use all your senses with your mind's eye, your mind's ear, hear with your ears, your smell, your taste if it's appropriate, and your touch as much of your senses as possible. Because the first thing you need to do is actually stop thinking about your performance anxiety and stop thinking about the thoughts that caused it. And since you cannot not think something, you need to think of something else. So, whether you choose your favourite place in the world, a favourite person, or anything that makes you feel calm, relaxed and loved, then think about that. Really get in the moment. Focus all of your attention there and become aware of your thinking and feelings. A lot of people use a photograph in their wallet, carry it around with them, but you can have that picture in your mind and bring it up at any moment. What you're choosing to do is you're choosing to take charge of your brain's thinking. Your brain is your servant, remember. So somebody's going to ask the question, where am I going to jump up and down like Tony Robbins? I don't have a green room. Well, I recall doing something similar myself outside a meeting room before I went in to pitch for, for some work. I stood in front of this mirror in the corridor and there was nobody around, so I pumped and punched and smiled and I did my face exercises. There was no one there, so I had my moment. Then I walked in to the meeting room to discover that it was one of those sneaky one-way mirrors and everyone inside had watched my warm-up routine. The tension was palpable. Some were in shock, some were smiling and chuckling away. So what I did is I shared my routine with them, why I did it, went through the process, and everyone felt good for doing it. And yes, it was one of the best wins ever and nothing to do with stress and anxiety (laughs) the thing is is make time and find space whatever you do to to need yourself to do to huff and puff a bit it could be as simple as climbing the stairs instead of taking the elevator get your heart pumping and the blood moving and those chemicals working for you so in summary to overcome performance anxiety you can breathe deeply into your belly laugh (laughs) pump yourself up and really punch and everything else jump up and down use and and run up the stairs and visualize the positive your favorite place your favorite person whatever makes you feel good so if it's so easy why is it so difficult well there's the rub it really is easy all you are doing is choosing to notice that anxiety is there or better still before It is there. Breathe, laugh, pump yourself up and think of something other than the anxiety-inducing thoughts. And you can change your thinking. But then the anxiety pops back into focus and you worry about it for a while. But then you come to realise that you're getting anxious and maybe you remember to breathe again. So it's the moment you feel anxious or you notice this. Your brain and your body are already awash with those chemicals that induce it. That is, your feelings are coming after the fact. The anxious response is unconscious. It is only when you train yourself to become aware of the feelings and emotions and choose to deliberately think and act differently. So awareness is key. 
the very split second that you become aware of your stinking thinking, it's time to change that thinking. So do so deliberately. Help yourself by breathing deeply and focus your attention on your breathing and things positive. And when the anxious thoughts return, do it again and again and again. And when it comes back, do it all again. Out of those four simple brain hacks, which one is the most difficult for you? You can breathe. You can breathe deep. You can laugh. You can pump yourself up. You can pace yourself. You could jog up the stairs instead of taking the elevator. And you can visualise the positive. But most of my clients admit that they forget to breathe. Not, of course, they forget to breathe entirely, but they forget to breathe with consciousness of their breathing. Well, the moment that you do remember, breathe deep. You might think that it's an inappropriate time, but here's a special bonus. When you are breathing in, you aren't speaking. I know, shocker, right? And that pause helps your audience process what you said. It also re-engages them to listen more closely. And because you have calmed down, your voice tone drops, which engages their attention further. You're changing your voice. Just try it the next time you remember. Notice, oh, I haven't noticed my breathing. Just do it and shock yourself with the great results. Do tell me how you get on with these. I'd love to hear from you about using these techniques or indeed anything else I've been sharing in these episodes. Let me know what you like and what you think I should improve and ask me about topics that you'd like me to cover. Tell me about your experience with the podcast. When do you listen to it? Do you download it onto your mobile phone? Uh, Are you listening to it in the gym as you exercise, as you go for a run or as you're driving? Just let me know. It, It helps me to understand where you are and what you might be doing as you're listening to these. Perhaps you're sat at the computer doing it online. And remember, share this with at least three colleagues or friends. Be greatly blessed. Bye bye for now. You've been listening to the Advantage Podcast with me, John Cameron. To find out more, visit us at selsin.com.